Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, November the 27th, 2018, and I'm going to hand this right over to Vegas. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Hope you had a good trading day. A lot of excitement today in the market, especially with this one here, ASNS, which I'll talk about in a minute. And we're also going to talk about CJJD, NIO, and here, H-E-A-R. So let's start with ASNS, which is Arsenis. And Arsenis uh, had some news today that it was going to agree to a merger with X4 Pharmaceuticals. And this is a company that's uh, are, you know, located in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And uh, X4 is a private company. And uh, the deal will probably close looks like uh the first half of 2019 so uh, we should see some information about that when the deal gets on the books but as a result of the merger agreement uh they have one of the uh the, one of the officers is promoted to the ceo right away and then uh, one of the gentlemen mr gray is going to be on the board of directors so it's kind of a nice uh news for the stock and you know the market just loved this news i mean this ran beautifully and i'm gonna turn this over to jim to talk all about that and we'll then talk a little bit more detail on the different things we talked about in chat today especially about patience and float rotation so jim over to you all right well hello um let's pull this up to the year's chart and this is beautiful stock that we traded today. This had everything going on it. It had share rotation. It had the, the volume. The pullbacks run right up to the uh, support areas and pulled right off of them. And so this year's chart, we almost filled the gap area. I mean, we got to this one point where I say, well, the next resistance <laughs> is a pretty good little spread. It'll run you up to about five bucks. This was right after we hit four. So I'm going to pull this on up to, to a 20 day chart and see how this thing just, just run beautifully up that wedge all the way up. And you can see it just kind of took off. And then once it hit this resistance right up here around 413, 411, it kind of corrected itself. And here we are pulling back after hours right now. So let me pull this right up here to the one day. And I can show you the places where we played off of it. And every time it hit a moving average, that's when I was telling people it was probably a time to buy. Because once every time I got in this thing and we had a breakout, I would go ahead and exit. And I did this all the way up. Others went ahead and held it and ran it all the way up to the top, knowing that we had pretty good volume on this, along with the good news of the mergers. So it ran all the way up to about 417, pulled back, and here we are after hours. Um, this looks to me like a pretty good little support area right now here at 365. And we're going to keep this on watch for tomorrow, and that is ASNS. And the next one we're going to talk about is CJJD. Is, yes, CJJD. Yeah, this is the, I've talked about this one in the past, but I do like it again. Um, I do like the weekly chart on China Jojo Drugstore. As you guys know, the earnings have finished. Um, they did already report that. And uh, the revenue grew to 16.7% from the year before. And, they, you know, they're doing a lot of like online offerings, like um, to, you know, to enhance the customer experience with me medical care services. So they're doing a lot of really interesting things to the platform. And uh, what I like, too, is that their COO is uh, a veteran from the healthcare industry. And uh, he's uh, got a lot of good experience in the retail pharmaceutical landscape. So I think we'll see a lot more uh, from this company. But the earnings was great. And uh, they're in good shape. So, Jim, you can talk about that chart because I love it for a swing trade. Oh. <laughs> 
it's a good idea. You got it there? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I was looking at something else. Oh, well, daydreaming, are you? Yeah, preoccupied. <laughs> That's okay. all right. It's what happens when you trade and you love stocks so much. Sometimes you need a breather. Yep. So we're sitting here at 226, and I've got a little resistance right here at 226. You see I'm pulled up a year's chart. This is China Jojo Drugstores. So that's the kind of resistance we wanted to break, and we kind of went past that today. We broke up past around 228 and hit 235. So now let me pull it up to a daily chart. First, let's look at a 20-day, and here we got about a 20-day high right here, right around 230. So I kind of like the way this chart looks. The, the pullbacks are healthy. It bounces right back. It seems like the volume is, is, is good, good on this stock. This is the first time I've seen this stock, so I'm kind of analyzing it myself. Let me pull up the daily chart now. And I liked uh, this while you're looking at the pulling up the daily. Yeah. What I liked about it earlier today, too, is I did notice a lot of nice uh, size orders uh, going through on the buy side. You know, people were buying 8,000 shares, 10,000 shares. So I did like the action, uh -huh. although it wasn't say, for, warranted for day trade. I did like what I saw uh, from, you know, people looking to buy this for a move over the, you know, next coming sessions holding longer term. Oh, for a swing trade. Yes. Well, I have to kind of back her up on that. As I was pointing out on this yearly chart, we kind of, you know, they had to pull back and just the way this channel's been running up. I mean, from this low right around 116, and that's been about four months ago. It's kept a good little channel all the way up to uh, this 355 area. So, yeah, let's keep CJJD on watch. I'm going to add it to my watch list starting tomorrow. This is a new one to me. And I'm going to see how to play it. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be NIO. Yeah, I don't know if it's called NIO, NEO. Everyone's yeah. telling me different pronunciations but um you know i do want to you know mention too that um you know there's been talks about you know can this actual company um neo steal the thunder from tesla you know uh we know that uh, neo delivered its first es8 model which is an electric sports utility car and tesla's competition was then born as you guys know uh, this has, you know, some strong advantages over Tesla's higher-end SUVs. Um, so it's a very interesting company to watch. I actually think that the reason, too, for this pullback on the stock, you know, we haven't really seen the proper action that the actual stock really deserves. I think a lot of it has to do with the, you know, trade talks and the tariffs and all kind, you know, the deal with, uh, you know, President and China. So we'll see what happens at the G20 summit, what they can actually maybe agree on that might help the China market. But putting that aside, um, I really like what I'm seeing on this chart uh, from a swing trade perspective as well. And I actually was looking to see a cup and handle forming. And I uh, think that the stock has room to go to at least $8 next. But I'm going to turn it over to Jim there. Um, who will talk about this. And I know, actually, you know, a lot of people bought this when it went IPO. And, you know, they're still very bullish on the stock. I mean, they like what this company is planning to do. So I still think there's a lot of interest in this company um, longer term. And uh, right now, all this, you know, pulling back and all that um, is not really shaking out longer term holders. So that's great to know so jim what do you think about this chart from a you know weekly perspective and from a swing trade perspective i think we've been watching it ever since it opened up from the ipo and we loved that day when it did open that day up and ever since then it's kind of pulled pelt, uh, pulled back and we've seen it um battle a couple um well take a couple of bounces up and then pull back and hit support level 
And that support level to us is right around a little under six bucks, 592. So right now, for the last month and a half, it's been go ahead and it's it's kind of bounced back up and has found that resistance level that we we like right around 770. Now I've been in and out of this for probably about five or six times since the IPO um, came out. So I'm bullish on Nile. I think any kind of pullback on this stock, I like to get in it. Right now we're sitting here right like we like I said right that resistance right around 770, 770 to eight bucks. If we can get past 790, that would be what I would call a breakout. So let's keep NIO on watch. And we're bullish on this, and we think long this is a great investment. Okay. And the next one that I vote and congratulations to the swing traders that listened to the video when Jim actually talked about here, H E A R. And do you guys know that, you know, this company, uh, no one really used to like before. But this company's been in business since 1975. So this is not just some startup or some young company that's been around for 10 years. This company's been around a long time. And uh, as you guys know, um, they're into all types of, um, I guess they're into the headphones, they're into audio receivers. You know, they've done a lot of, you know, they've acquired... Um, different companies um, that actually supply gaming accessories to the European market. They are into USB devices, video capture products. I mean, they're into everything. So um, they're a really interesting company. They provide, you know, the headsets for all the different consoles out there like Xbox, PlayStation. So you guys that play video games know that you probably, maybe you guys have a headset. Uh, but anyhow, Jim alerted this around $14 for a swing trade. And he said, I want to see $16 to $17 on this stock. And you know what? What an amazing trade. And this was totally stressful. You know, some people were hearing the chatter out there. And this is why you shouldn't always listen to, like, you know, people out there on social media. You know, people were listening that, oh, you know, here's get shorted and uh you know what maybe the ones that were in the trade that thought that or got scared because of what they were hearing uh got out of the trade but the ones that you know could see what the stock was doing and the channel it was in would be able to see that day after day this stock was on the right path um because this was alerted around i believe was november 15 or 16 uh, I think it was actually the 15th, Jim, that you alerted this for a swing trade. Yeah. So congratulations to the swing traders because, boy, it had a beautiful volume today, over 1.2 million. So good job. All right. Well, here's the year's chart, and or six months in a way. Let me pull up the year. You can see we called this out when right about the time it started to break out when it was right around five bucks. And that next day, man, just had a big old bounce right off earnings. And this brings in the money. This is for gamers. I think a lot of gamers love this this headset. You can mention headset to any gamer and they're gonna say Turtle Beach. And that's kind I guess that's the kind of game set they want. So here we are. I called this thing. I'm going to pull this up to a 20 day chart. Right about here, I called it at 1440. And I said, This thing looks like it's getting ready to bounce. And the next day, we went ahead and had a pullback. This was after it already had a breakout. Right there at $16. So I thought I was a pretty safe bet right here at 1440. And that's when I got in it. Then the next day, we had another pullback. So people had an opportunity to get maybe get in it at a cheaper price. And it went ahead and so here we are. Called it to go to sixteen and seventeen dollars. So here we are after hours at sixteen seventy-five. We're almost at seventeen. 
and this is here and I think it's oversold this is my Christmas special that's when I called it out as when it was down there at 1440 so keep always keep H E A R on your watch list any mm -hmm. and I do want to do yeah. Uh, sorry, Jim. I just want to mention too that um, this stock that you gave as a swing trade, uh, the timing on it, was good because um, shortly after that, I actually see a lot of uh, mutual fund companies like BlackRock and Morgan Stanley, um, the, you know, in, uh, teachers, advisors. They were actually adding shares to their portfolio. Oh, really? So that was really good. To uh, Morgan Stanley had a position of 47,000 shares, and guess what? They added 431,000 shares um, of the stock. So that was a percentage increase of 818%. So they have a really big position. They actually are the largest holder of oh. the fund. Of uh, They own a, a big position of, uh, here. And that was actually filed. Um, they filed a 13F, and it was an amendment because they already had an existing file. Um, but they did report that they added to the existing position. So that's a pretty juicy. So their uh, and Vanguard group added on November 23rd. So the fact that the smart money has moved in to the stock is also a very good sign. That is real good news. That means we could probably raise our uh, our 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 price range up, our targets. Knowing that, you know that yes. some of the fat cats are in there playing around with it. Well, oh, yeah. did you want to do the special? Oh, do you have a special? Well, you you were going to talk about CPRX. Oh yes. Yeah. So CPRX interesting because. Uh, that one there, you know, that one got halted today and everyone's like, oh, there's news, there's news. And they're like, what news? There's no, nothing's been released. Now, CPRX is located in, in Coral Gables, Florida, and uh, they're a company that uh, develops, um, you know, therapeutic uh, treatment for various orphan drugs. They're, they're looking to, I guess, um, have something that they can culminate but apparently some uh, trade worker was on site at the company. I mean, this is what the social media is saying. Um, and that on his computer, he was doing something. Uh, this person was there to do something for them on the internet. <laughs> apparently his screen uh, showed that they had received approval for um, some sort of uh, drug. And again, that's why the stop. The, that's why it turned out the stop got halted because I'm assuming that someone, company CPRX, reported this to the Securities Commission that this person's screen was seen showing that they had received approval of the company's NDA, and uh, that wasn't true. So I guess they had halted the stock just to make now. sure that no one starts to buy this and that they have. Well, it's open drug. now. Yeah, it's open now. But I guess they were trying to prevent people from, you know, starting to load up on the stock, knowing that uh, there really is or anything. Kind of makes sense why they halted. You know, people thought they halted. There was coming, which was true. News was pending, but the news, the news was that nothing's been released yet or confirmed. So, I guess to protect. Investors, investor protection, the number one thing with the Securities Commission as well. Uh, that was the right thing was to halt the stock. But nevertheless, putting that aside, um, what are your thoughts, Jim, on this stock from a weekly chart perspective? I'm looking at a yearly chart, and I think this thing, right now after hours, it's opened up after hours, so we're at three bucks. It pulled back to about 282. So. It's looking good right now here at three. Keep a good eye on it. Um, 321 is the 50 SMA on the yearly chart. That's probably where it needs to go. And it looks to me like it's doing pretty good. I mean, it, opened, it closed at 291. Now we're at at three dollars. So CPRX, keep it on watch. 
All right. Well, this concludes our market report. And um, I will say the fact that CPRX after hours over three dollars or back towards three is uh, quite a so keep it on watch for tomorrow. And uh, just remind everyone that you're welcome to join us in voice chat. We don't mind if you don't join the room after. It doesn't matter. Uh, come experience what it's like for a couple weeks and hopefully you'll learn a couple things. So anyhow, we hope that uh, you guys are doing great and uh, learning from the videos. And we appreciate everybody. And thank you so much. And I love stocks. And I'm signing off. And Jim, anything else to add? Nope. 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 Okay. Feeling pretty good. Well, everyone, have a great night. Okay. This is the Aftermarket Report, November the 27th, 2018. And we love stocks.